All right, welcome everyone to the Trade Findings and Adjustments for Tuesday night, the 3rd of March. My name is Kevin Hurley, and I'm going to host you here tonight on Here Are the Real Facts. I should probably do that uh, with an S. Here are the real facts on a black swan event, right? Going over our trades right now, about the only thing we have left open would be the uh, the Baidu leaps and the Costco leaps. But we also have open, but we also have open SPY and QQQ. Uh, I'm going to see 03 April 2020. We have um what else do we have we probably have 09 april 2020 and i know we have the monthly aprils month early april 2020 i mean those are Those are how you do it. So let me let me go through and let me just plan simply say I'm gonna say here are the real facts and steps to take on black swan events. So here we go. I'm gonna do the best I can to help you understand what we're doing and why. So I'm just going to type in here steps, right? And my version, only my version. Again, I'm trying to do everything I can to make this easy for you to understand and to live through. So I'm going to say these... These are the steps I took in 2008, 2000, 1996, 1993, and 1987 were the big ones that I fought in Black Swan. And I'm going to big dips in markets. Okay. So out of curiosity, sometimes you get lucky, right? Sometimes you're going to get lucky and you're going to have protection already on. So I should type that in. Sometimes you get lucky and you already have protection on for earnings. So let's face it, there are times when it's better to be lucky than to be good. But First thing, right? Recognize the possibilities. Is it always possible to recognize when you're going to have a big downturn? What do you think? Okay, of course. So, so so four of you just typed in no. Of course not. There are times you're not going to recognize it pre-occurrence. There's sometimes you can't recognize it while it's occurring because you're panicked and fearful. And there's sometimes that it is occurring or has occurred and you're going to ignore it. 
as a defense mechanism. Nope, I don't need to do anything. I just need to stay the course. Nope, I don't need to do anything. I just need to keep letting uh, keep letting it happen and suffer through it. Oh, all of a sudden, I call myself a trader, and I become a buy and hold specialist. <laughs> Recognize the possibilities that you are or might currently be in a black swan event. Higher VIX. Lack of understanding market movements. What else could be a trigger? What else could be a trigger for understanding what's happening? There you go. Bigger spreads. If I can go ahead and pick on Robinhood and E-Trade, platforms that aren't working like they are supposed to. E-Trade hasn't worked all trade. It's now working after the fact, but it doesn't work all, it hasn't worked all day, period. You've been screwed. What do you think the second thing to do is? What's that second thing to do? When you're in these black swan events and just you know what's hitting the fan. <laughs> um, so it's funny that you said that. The first thing that just came across when I asked that question was pray. And, oh. Uh, I'll be honest, for the last two weeks, I've kind of been holed up in my room. I've been not sleeping at night. I've been reading and getting as much information as I can. Keeve is here, and I probably, not probably, I owe Keeve an apology. Uh, Keeve and I talk daily. In fact, all my guys talk, and I talk daily. But Keeve is primarily the one that I speak the most with. And... To Keeb's credit, uh, he's been on the other end of my frustrations, my anger, my hurt, my pissed off at the market, my, my cussing and swearing. So I know Keith probably thinks, Gall, if I've got Kevin on the phone or on a speakerphone, do I have to warn of my kids and family of the room? Do I have to to uh, shut the door so my wife doesn't hear it. <laughs> um, I owe Keeve a huge apology. Uh, under stress, I can still think logically. I've done it through being in uh, some law enforcement training. I've done it through experiences in life. I've done it through the stock market. The thinking and the preparation and the protection is easy to do. What's not easy to do is to control my mouth. Um, and for some reason, I become uh, a drunken sailor and a potty mouth. And uh, Keeve, I do apologize. So prayer is maybe not the thing. You should probably pray every night. But the first thing to do, plain and simple, take a profit. Even if it is is a taxable event. For the majority of people, it's take a profit. Now, why would I say take a profit versus our third, third step? Why would I suggest to take a profit?
because you never go broke taking a profit. Bingo. Someone's heard me talk to them for years. You've never, you never go broke taking a profit. I agree. I mean, in all honesty, I suggest that for people that maybe don't know how to trade or or for some reason are willing to sit through these drops. I don't understand that. I feel we need to be more proactive in how we manage our portfolios. We need to be more proactive in how we are positioning ourselves. Take the profits off the table. Step three is hedge the portfolio. Now, there's a couple different thoughts. Do you hedge prior in low volatility times? What do you think? Do you hedge prior in low volatility times? <laughs> so I've got Four yeses and two noes that just came flying in. Four yeses and two noes. So the correct answer depends on your needed gains in the market and your personal risk tolerance. If you're always being hedged, if you're always purchasing, especially the last 10 years, since 2010, you have given away all your profits and you are going to have huge down years and flat to slightly up years. If you're always going to stay hedged, I guess you can ignore um, technical analysis because it doesn't mean anything to you. If you're always going to be hedged, you'll never beat the S&P over a long period of time because you've given away your profits. You have to have some risk in the game. If it's all you have, you won't have any more, you can live off of it for the next 20 years, then you should probably always be hedged and you'll slowly eat away at your, your returns. But I've chosen options, long puts, or bearish spreads to hedge my positions. And I've done it for a reason. Um, all the way back in 87, that's when we learned you can't hedge a commodity against a stock. You can't hedge oil or gold or silver or wheat or grain against the stock market. In 2000, we saw everything go down except metals. In 2008, Everything went down, including metals, but then they came back. So it makes no sense to hedge a utility against a industrial, against a financial, against a technology company. I buy insurance on stock. I buy spreads when the VIX gets over 30. I don't make up every single penny on the way down and neither does anyone else in real life 
Welcome to real life. There's no magic spread or magic indicator or magic trade or magic printing ATM machine. Um, that's the, the pirate guy. There's no magic in what we do. And the risk for some of these guys, oh my gosh, straight naked puts, no hedge. You just sit there and you cringe. In the education side, I advocate safe option strategies. The reason why is because they don't teach one thing. They teach you to look at all kinds of different things. But here is real life. Real life that today on a 2.81 down day, on a 2.81 down day, I'm trying to get my calculator going. A 2.81 down day, 136 divided by 1, 1, we'll do 150, right? 1.18% is what I'm down. We beat the market by 2.81%. Kevin, you're losing money. Yes. This is real life. I'm not a reset my portfolio after the down days. I'm not a, hey, I'm going to fake results. I mean, here I just apologize for Key for cussing and swearing at him. And the first thing I want to say is, no, sheesh, I'm down. Duh. What dummy wouldn't figure that out? But here's the difference. When we bought some verticals for $3 and now we're seven, we bought a lot. When we had to jump in for everything for $3.61, they're now worth $6.26. Even some that were filled on late without the downside are up 10 bucks. $3.55, $6.51. We do have some at five dollars that are currently at four twenty-eight. Hopefully, we sold those off. Uh, we did sell these one off three thirty uh, three eighty-four. Let's go up three eighty-two. Excuse me. Those that we put on for three eighty-two, two hundred thirty-five of them. Nope, those are our current ones we have in place. So those are ones that are currently in place that we didn't take off that we can. Um, these were the, the ones that were down below. Um, anyway, so the short answer, all I'm trying to show you is that we're doing everything we can to find a way to make up some of the downward movement. And that's your key. The key, and I said it for forever, the more you make up as positions go down, the more, actually, let's put it this way, the less they need to come back. So with that said, leaps are going to be in trouble unless we have a big bounce before the end of the year and or we dollar cost average. Now, I love being in leaps. Leaps are an amazing stock replacement strategy. A leap is about 10% of the cost of the stock. I have some people that have been pissed off. Oh my gosh, I'm down 50% on a leap. And my answer is, really? Thank God you're down 50% on a stock replacement strategy. Because if you were in the stock, 
you'd be down 10 to 20% of the total value of a stock versus being down half of only 10%. I've capped their downside risk on a stock by having a leap. The most they can lose is 10% of the value of the stock. The position in itself inherently is less risky than stock ownership. Now, what you're going to have to watch out, you can't keep throwing good money at bad. Yes, go ahead and dollar cost average once or twice. Don't do it 10 times. That's not admitting to yourself that it won't get there in the time frame allowed to you in your leap position. Yes, it's okay to add some puts against your leaps. Or you might do those spy puts as things, uh, as we keep heading down. So can it get more volatile? Here's the next one. Can it get even more volatile. Simple answer for certain. And when we do start having big up and down days with no consistency. <laughs> Man, am I able to type and spell something fierce. Then you go to one to five day straddle, strangle, spread trades. And you start creating trade after trade after trade, day after day after day after day that you're going to create or make money on until the volatility drains out. I'm pretty sure in two weeks, we're gonna have four to six weeks, which will be in a market that you've never seen before. I'm going to tell you in the next four weeks, and we're gonna have that four to six week period, maybe four to eight weeks, that we're going to seem like a third world country. We'll shut down some transportation, we'll shut down some gathering events. Um, churches will be a home-centered or a home-based church where you do it on your own for a couple months so we don't all mingle together and get each other sick or pass it on. Um, we're going to seem like it's a third world country that we've been used to um, and seeing in the movies. You're going to hunker down for a bit. You're going to hunker down so you don't get the worst flu that you've ever had. I do not believe that mortality rate is two to three percent. It's actually higher right now here in the US than it's been in other countries. But if you look at all the data that China seems to be hiding from a person that I know that's there, the mortality rate in China is twice as bad, but they have 10 times the amount of cases that are actually being reported. Kevin, wouldn't it be better just to go to cash? Just go to all cash. Well, if you flee, you don't have your opportunity to make it back up. And just because that was my prediction in no way means that it's going to happen. You can't pick tops or bottoms, so you capture a portion of the wave. Right now, we're at the point of capturing portions of the wave. Yesterday, when we had a big 5% up day, we took off second set of puts, we took off second set of, of 
index put options. We were getting prepared for, well, this could be it. At no point in time did Keeve and I decide, oh yeah, we hit the bottom, we're good to go. We know there's gonna be double bottoms. In fact, it might test the bottom for the next three months right here. It will probably go down another 10% or more. But we can't trade as if we know everything. Our fiduciary responsibility is to say, well, we're going to make a bet and you got to live with it. The key, everything you take off, do it for a profit. And everything we took off on Monday was for a profit. Was it more profitable on Friday? Yes. Would I have let my clientele go through a weekend with no protection? Hell no. Did I get it wrong? Definitely not. I wouldn't let my money go through a weekend with all the corona warnings go through without uh, protection. I'm not going to do it for you guys. It's funny, I had a comment that said, oh, you screwed up. I said, really? I screwed up in protecting people's portfolios and taking positions off on Monday. Everything we took off was for a profit. I screwed up? Tell me, if you knew we were going to have a big rebound, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you publish it? Why are you Monday morning quarterbacking and acting like you're smart? Because you're really not. Why would you let positions go and gamble them through a weekend when we've seen what we've had? I chewed them up one side down the other. Guys, this is the pain of an irrational market. This is also the opportunity of seeing your market go on sale. We started to do a little nibbling yesterday. We'll probably do some more nibbling after another 3% down. We're going to have some protection on, maybe not on all your long calls, your stock option replacement, but for those portfolios, we will have index protection on the way down. Anything we make up as profit as things come back. Any questions I can answer for you guys? Are there any questions or anything I can help you with to help you better understand what we're doing and why? If I don't see anything come in, I appreciate you being here today. Let me make sure and see I haven't missed anything. Keith says, yes, that's a reason though it's called a black swan. I know that was for one of my comments I made earlier. If you came late, I should have this up and posted uh, within an hour or a bit. So I have it 6.30 my time. By eight o'clock Mountain Standard Time, this will be posted. This is what we're doing. This is what has made money in all these years I listed up here. It doesn't mean it was profitable every single day. If that's what you're looking for, stick with the fake education. Good luck. But I do hope this was helpful. I don't see any other questions coming in. Guys, have a great night. Um, probably it'll be Kiev on Thursday. We've got to get Kiev into this a little bit more and don't expect a bunch of trades to come out. He's just going to be during our view of where we're at and where protections have made money in that time period. Uh, we know it's hard. If this was easy, guess what? Everyone would be getting licensed and doing it. But don't worry, we're in good shape. Guys, take care. Have a wonderful evening. And I look forward to, to seeing you guys Thursday morning. Good night. <laughs>